Okay, we've got our pseudocode written for this um, potential um, homework problem that you get in a programming language class. And now I'm going to go through and based on our pseudocode that we just wrote, I'm going to write the actual program that goes along with it. So the nice thing about having this pseudocode is that you can actually use it as like a scaffold for your program. Um, so by that I mean since I commented out each one of the lines in my pseudocode, these won't actually run in the program, but they're a good description of, of what the program is going to do. And then, so if you're going back to read through your program, you can read um, the comments that you wrote, which was originally pseudocode, and then you can see like the actual MATLAB syntax that goes into it. Um, before that, do that, I'm going to clear out all this stuff just so it's a lot nicer to look at. Okay. So here we go. Um, so get a. So remember, this is a part where I'm going to take in a value from the user and store that as the variable a. And so the way to do that in MATLAB, you say a. I'm just going to use a. Um, so a equals input. And within input, we can have a little dialog in there that tells the user what we want them to input. So just I'm going to write what is a in there. Okay. And I left a space just so it cleans up the output a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing for B. But remember we got to change it to B and B and then finally C. So that C and C. Okay. So really quick, if I run this, it's going to ask me what's A, and put in what's B, and what's C, right? Um, and then they're all stored as variables over here in our workspace. Um, now you'll notice though that it had this output right there, and the reason why it output those um, values is because I didn't suppress them with a semicolon. So if you don't want the output to come out, um, put a semicolon at the end of each one of your lines. Okay, so we've got the input. Let's move into calculating the value under the radical. So quadratic equation is negative b plus or minus the square root of 4ac all divided by 2a. So this is the um, this is the square or b squared minus 4ac part. So I'm just going to call it under whoop, under root because it's the value under the root, under the square root. And so we can just put in here um, b squared minus 4 times a times c. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just to make sure it does everything in the correct order, I'm going to put those in parentheses and then put a um, semicolon there. Okay, so now for calculating the plus value. So this is going to be like if we did um, just negative b plus the square root of 4ac, um, or yeah, plus the four, square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, right? So I'm going to call this um, the plus root. I can call it anything I want to, but just to make it easier, I'm going to call it the plus root. So we're going to store a, a, a root um, that's equal to this calculation, which is going to be negative b plus, and we can use the square root function, and under root, and then we want that all divided by 2a, 2 times a. Now right here, we, got, we have to be careful to put parentheses in there as well. Okay, so negative b plus the square root of all of this divided by 2a. So that was the plus root, and of course we have to do the minus part too. So I could call this the minus root. And the only thing that's going to be different is that we're subtracting instead of adding. 
Okay, and now we want to output these two values. Now, you may be tempted to use fprintf, um, which is something we learned about in class, though I was trying it earlier and it's difficult, it's very difficult to output complex numbers, and as we know from the quadratic, quadratic equations, um, there's a lot of times you get complex roots. So in this case, I'm just going to use the display function. So display, and remember, when we display things, um, we can do it as an array or as a string, uh, but here we're mixing strings with numbers, so we have to make it an array of strings. So for the first part of my output, I'm just gonna have a little description that says the roots are, and so the first one is the plus root, root, right? But since plus root is a number, we need to change this to a string. So I'm gonna use the num to string that we learned about. Okay, and then let's put a little space in between the two numbers. So I like to do, just put an and in there. And then we can just copy this. and use the minus root, minus root. Okay, so we've got the roots are, notice that these are, there's four um, values in this array that we're gonna print out. They're all strings, but the first one is the roots are, the next one is num to string plus root, the next one is just and, and then the last one is um, outputting the minus root that we calculated. Okay, so before I get down here to plotting it, let's just run this, make sure it works. Um, so here we go, what is A? Um, let's just say it's three. What is B? Say that's two, and C is one. Okay, so here we go, it's looking like it's working. Um, and we can see all our outputs over here as well. So now let's go into making these arrays. So we want an array, we're gonna call it x, and it's gonna go from negative 10 um, to 10, but we want it to have a step size of 0 0.1. Okay, done. Uh, semicolon that right there. Okay, and finally, um, we're gonna make the y, the array for the y values. This one's a little trickier. So remember, this is gonna make a whole array of x values, and we want each one of these x values to go into this function. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that function right here. So it may seem like, oops, let me get rid of that. Like we can just copy and paste that in there, and it's gonna work. Um, the problem is, that x is an array, so we need all of these calculations to happen multiple times or on each value that is in the x array. So um, we need to put in, oh, not there, the periods to make, the, to make it a uh, multi-element operation. Also, you can't just put a x together that doesn't mean multiplication um, in MATLAB. So we're going to have to do a, um, a dot star x, which means multiple multiplications on x, right? And then the same thing over here, dot star x. So this is times x um, plus c. Okay. So let's just run that really quick. I'll use three, two, one again. Okay, here we go. So down here in our workspace, it's popped up over here that we have an array called X. It's a one by 201 array. So if I double click on it, I can see all the values of it. Um, double click on Y, we have the same thing, all the values calculated um, for Y. And so it popped up in this variables tab over here. So to get back to our, our code that we're writing, just click the editor tab. Okay, so now for the plotting part. Um, so we're gonna plot X and Y, 
the two arrays are the same size, which is great because that's the only way it'll work. <laughs> and so now let's plot it. So first we have to call it a number. So we're going to call it figure one and then plot x, y. And we're ready. So I'm running it right now. Go three, two, one. There we go. It has given us our roots and has plotted the graph for us. Um, the one thing I don't like about this, just calling plot like this though, is that you can't specify your axes or your window, things like that. So I went online, uh, did a little bit of searching and came up with this little bit of code that makes our output a little nicer. So I'm just gonna put that in there and uh, give you a brief description on what it does. So this axes right here, this allows you to put in an X minimum, X maximum, Y minimum, and Y maximum. Um, so that will just make us, make it like a negative 10 to 10 in each direction, no matter what. So kind of like on a graphing calculator. And then down here, this is just for plotting lines that will act as our axes. So we have one line at x equals zero and another line at y equals zero. And the syntax within this function called line um, allows you to specify a color. So I'm just making the two axes black. So that's where the K comes from. Okay, now if I run this, I'm gonna use a better example. So how about four, two, and then negative five. And there we go. Now we don't have complex roots this time, which is nice. But let's let's see if this makes any sense. So the roots are 0 0.89. So this does look really close to one right here. So I think we're pretty close. We're pretty good. And then negative 1.39. 1.39. It's not quite at two. So yeah, it looks like we're good. Um. So I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about pseudocode and then also um, a little bit more on how to make arrays and how to use arrays in plots. And remember this part down here, this is all kind of extra stuff, extra formatting um, that you can use for any of your plots that you're going to do. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.